Welcome to our viewers around the world and on PBS in America. This is a statement being given by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announcing his plans to drop out of the presidential race. Uh, he was standing as an independent candidate in the presidential race, but he says he will now quit that race. Uh, and reports suggest he is throwing his support behind the campaign of Donald Trump. Uh, we'll listen in uh, and we'll talk about what it means in just a moment. So let's take you first of all to uh, our correspondent Jenny Kumar who is in Washington for us right now and Jenny you're listening to that uh, statement that speech being given by Robert F Kennedy Jr as we are uh, so uh, he has made a number of statements um, it's clear at this stage that he is dropping out the race and some reports suggesting he's throwing his weight behind the campaign of Donald Trump. Yes, and we've seen uh, court papers uh, where he's withdrawing a challenge, a, legal, a challenge uh, to uh, his name appearing on a ballot in Pennsylvania. Uh, and it says on that court paper that he is endorsing Trump. So I don't think he's actually said that in his speech so far. And this is the latest uh, extraordinary development in what's been an extraordinary presidential race. We have someone who comes from a family with deep democratic roots now Look, it looks like he's going to be supporting uh, the Republican candidate, Donald Trump. And he addressed this immediately in his speech. He uh, said that he uh, pledged his alliance, just like his, his father, Robert Kennedy, who was the Democrat presidential candidate uh, in the late 60s, who was assassinated. Uh, and just like his uncle, who was President Kennedy, JFK, who was also assassinated. Um, and he's also uh, spoken at length about how he feels the party has moved away from its core values. Uh, he said that they now support censorship, corruption, big pharma and big money. Um, and he's attacked the party for uh, what he says is they're throwing up legal barriers to his name appearing on ballots in uh, different states. Um, and he's also attacked the media, saying that uh, they have excluded him in debates and impeded uh, his campaign. But the background to this is his campaign was struggling. Uh, when Kamala Harris entered the race, he saw a dip in his popularity. Uh, he has polled at his height of popularity at around 15%. Uh, but a recent poll showed that he was on around 5%. Uh, so he's been struggling in the polls. He's also been struggling financially. Uh, he's in de the campaign is in debt by around uh, mil by millions of pounds, and he's also had some expensive uh, legal challenges to deal with as uh, he's faced a ban on his uh, name appearing on some ballots. So some of the reasons there behind uh, this decision, we're waiting to hear. Also, um, whether there will be, if he does endorse. Donald Trump, whether there will be uh, any indication as to him getting something in return, so for example, a uh, position in the Trump administration. Jenny, for now, thanks very much. Uh, it's Jenny Kumar there in Washington for us. Um, so just as we were uh, talking there to Jenny, uh, confirmation as expected, had, as had been widely um, tipped that uh, he will suspend his campaign. Now, a crucial line in this. Uh, RFK Jr. saying, I'm not terminating my campaign, I'm simply suspending it. And this is because, as Jenny was telling us there, his name will remain on the ballot uh, paper in most states. Uh, so saying that, I encourage you to vote for me, but at the same time making it clear that he had uh, no realistic chance of winning the election. Of course, uh, now this uh, a two-party race between uh, Kamala Harris and, of course, Donald Trump. Uh, RFK Jr., who was standing as an independent, saying he is suspending his campaign. Uh, he will remove his name from uh, the ballot in 10 battleground states. But nonetheless, he says, I'm not terminating the campaign. Uh, I'm simply suspending it. Uh, but the crucial line in all of this, and we'll discuss what this could mean for both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris in just a moment. But RFK Jr. saying he will throw his support behind that campaign of Donald Trump. So uh, endorsing uh, former President Trump in the race for the White House in November. Remember, there are 72 days to go until that election 
uh, in the United States. Uh, a lot can happen in that time, but today a significant moment that the independent candidate in this presidential campaign, uh, this presidential election, uh, dropping out and throwing his support behind that uh, of uh, the campaign of Donald Trump. So the big question though, what impact could it have on the election itself? Well, of course, at this stage, it's impossible to say for certain. Most of RFK Jr.'s supporters are independent swing voters. But here's what we know about him so far. As of Wednesday, he was polling at just under 5% nationally. Now, most of his support is made up of independent voters who either didn't want to vote for Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Well, in fact, his support almost halved when Joe Biden quit the race in July. You can see here on this graph there uh, that huge fall, that big drop in his support coming as soon as voters were given an option that either wasn't Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Polls suggest a large proportion of those voters switched their support instead to Kamala Harris. But what about those voters who were remaining loyal to RFK even after Joe Biden quit the race? Well, have a look at this. This is an August poll from Reuters Ipsos. Kamala Harris leading Donald Trump by five points nationally, just 4% opting for RFK Jr. 15% were still undecided or voting for another candidate. So if those same voters are then forced to choose between Ms. Harris and Mr. Trump, well, this is how it could look. Her lead shrinks to just 2% over Donald Trump. So it proves it's going to be a very tight election. Those few percents could make a huge difference to the outcome of this vote. So let's talk now to Michelle Bernard, who's the chief executive at the Bernard Centre for Women, Politics and Public Policy. She's been at the Democratic Convent, uh, Conference Convention uh, this week in Chicago. And also Annika Green, who's formerly a speechwriter for George W. Bush. Good to have you both with us on the programme. And there's a lot for us to talk about as far as that announcement is concerned. And uh, let me start with you, Michelle. First of all, what do you make of that announcement? Uh, widely expected, but crucially throwing his support behind that of Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I actually find it very sad. I have followed the Kennedy family as, as most Americans uh, and people around the world have for many, many years. Um, and for a family that have been such staunch uh, defenders of American democracy. Um, I find it very odd uh, that Robert Kennedy would throw his support towards Donald Trump, who many people believe is the greatest threat to American democracy um, in many, 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 many years. So I find it very sad um, that he would somehow find it appropriate to support uh, former President Trump, given all of the attacks that Trump has made to individual rights, and civil liberties in the United States. Um, but he was also pretty critical there of the Democratic Party, saying that Kamala Harris had been appointed without due process, uh, saying that she hadn't given any proper interviews, she'd not talked about policy on the campaign trail. Very critical of how the Democrats have handled this transition of power. Yeah, he's been very critical, but, you know, he, he needs to go in and actually look at the rules. If you were to go in and take a look at First of all, what happened with Vice President with President Biden stepping down is unprecedented. People had to go back and they needed to look at the rules of the Democratic Party, of the Democratic Convention, and and what it is that needed to be done. Um, and and they followed the process. So in that sense, he is absolutely incorrect. P the delegates all had to decide who they were going to support, and they did that. They followed the rules to a T. And so in that sense, he is reporting mistruths somewhat in the same way that we have become very accustomed to Donald Trump doing the same. Did she um, was she voted on during any of the caucuses um, and primaries? No, because she was the vice presidential candidate, not the presidential candidate. But she has not been appointed. We do not have a monarchy in the United States. She had to fight for the votes of every single delegate who cast their votes for her and made her the Democratic nominee. Annika Green, let's bring you in at this stage too. And RFK Jr. saying he will now throw his support to former President Trump. Uh, the reasons that he's doing that, he says, are because of free speech, the war in Ukraine and the war on our children. What does he mean by that? 
Well, I'm not sure what he means by that exactly. There were reports that he had approached the Harris campaign earlier about a possible endorsement, and there wasn't a lot of interest there. So I think that the candidacy of RFK shows that there are aspects of both parties that he could kind of stitch up and represent. And so in terms of worrying about free speech, there is definitely, as we heard in the interview just now, a problem with um, censoring of views and of that being decided by social media companies. And it was revealed that the federal government was pressuring companies to suppress reports, true reports, such as right before our last presidential election, there was a laptop discovered that belonged to President Biden's son, Hunter, and that was suppressed on social media. The outlet that broke the story, the New York Post, had its uh, traffic throttled. Uh, they couldn't uh, advertise in their normal ways. And that's one of the issues that RFK is talking about that he himself has experienced um, about announcements that are very innocuous with his campaign. Is he a sore loser in all of this? I'm just looking at some of his comments about the electoral system at all. He says that in an honest system, I believe I won would have won the election. He says my father and my uncle thrived in a system of open debates with fair primaries uh, and a truly independent media. He says one untainted by government propaganda and censorship in a system of nonpartisan courts and election boards. Everything would be different. These are the words of a man who had support of about 5% uh, nationally. He was never going to win, was he? No, he was never going to win. And I would I would question his uh, version of how things were when his father and his uncle were running. Uh, they're notoriously John F. Kennedy's um, private uh, affairs with other women were not reported on. The media was very silent about that. There, there have been a lot of things that, you know, at times in our past and now that depending on who's in office, often if it's a Democrat, then the media is complicit in trying to make that person look good. And we're seeing that happen with Kamala Harris. Now, some of that is natural in the course of there being a convention. Uh, most of the media, uh, most of the people who in American media tend to be liberal. That's well established by data. And it's not necessarily malicious that they, they, they tend to believe this. But in this case, Kamala's candidacy is very much a vibes presidency, and many in the press are determined to haul her over the finish line. Yeah, it's so interesting. Isn't it? Michelle, I wonder what you make of that, too. I mean, it's a pretty damning indictment of the, of the U.S. electoral system. Uh, in his words, we're not saying it's correct, but, he, you know, a, a parting shot from RFK Jr. there saying that the system is broken. Well, you know, the system uh, in many ways is, is broken, but in many ways it's not. And, you know, and what I would argue is I think it's pretty damning that he does not have the support of one member of the Kennedy family in his president in his bid for the presidency. Um, you, the one thing that we can say in uh, in our electoral system is the voters have spoken. If RFK were at the top of the ticket, if people voted for him, if people donated money to his campaign and we could see palpable evidence of a following that wanted him to be the next president of the United States, there's no media in the United States or anywhere else in the world that could hide that from the American public. He simply just does not have the support. If your own family will not support you, in a bid for the presidency, why would the American public do so as well? I think that is a very, very strong indictment against him and his prospects um, for, for, for the presidency of the United States. Moreover, if you look at the history of his family and the reverence that many people have for the Kennedy family, I have to believe that his uncle and his father would be aghast at looking at who Donald Trump is as a human being that RFK would, would lend his support to the man who is virtually a terrorist when it comes to individual rights and civil liberties and many other things in the United States. He has basically thrown his support at a man who is an avowed rapist and a, an avowed sexist and an avowed racist. That is very sad, and that is why he has not done well in his bid for the presidency. Annika, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I'm just saddened to hear such blatant misinformation repeated with a straight face. Uh, yes, he has been called a lot of things. He is not a self-avowed anything. Um, and the one trial he's been convicted in, those charges were elevated from a misdemeanor to a felony for the sole purpose of giving the Democrats the talking point that he's a convicted felon. And it doesn't matter. 
Now, with RF Kennedy Jr., he has appealed to not only independents, self-described, but also Republicans and Democrats. And that has been very interesting because there are members of both parties who are really not happy where the party has gone. And on the left, it's Democrats who are middle of the road, moderate, who are reasonable, who are not happy with the progressive wing of the party, seizing control, with seeing college students um, on campuses uh, celebrating terrorist attacks, actual terrorist attacks in Israel where people were raped and murdered, which that's what many in the modern Democratic Party support. Now, Kamala mm -hmm. Harris in her speech did a great job with that issue. As a speechwriter, I was very impressed with that. And I thought it showed a lot of uh, thought and care put into those issues. But that's really why a lot of Democrats were looking at RFK Jr., because that's the direction the Democratic Party has been heading. And we will talk about our Democratic convention uh, that has just wrapped up in Chicago uh, in just a moment. But uh, for now, both of you, uh, thank you. Stay with us, though. We will talk some more in a moment. And just a bit of detail. We said a little earlier as well that um, RFK Jr.'s name will remain on a lot of ballot papers. Uh, it will be removed, though, uh, we are told, from 10 specific ones, those just in the key battleground states. Uh, he says that my presence there would be a spoiler to the outcome of those votes. So he will remove his name from the ballot paper in 10 key battleground states. Uh, but he says elsewhere, if my name remains on the ballot, if you want to vote for me, you can. It won't harm the outcome of the election. But in those crucial battleground states, his name will be removed, uh, leaving that as a two-party race uh, in those key states.